Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. So a while ago, I saw this video that Tariq Nasheed did, and the video is entitled Five Reasons Why Black People Should Not Vote for Joe Biden. And I will post a link to that video in the description box so that you can check it out for yourself, watch it for yourself, and judge it for yourself. And what I'm going to do now is provide my video response to Tariq Nasheed. Before I even get started, I just want to point out a couple of things. In this race for president, there are only two real candidates that have any chance of being elected. That's Donald Trump and Joe Biden. And you have a deliberate effort on the part of the Trump administration to deter black people from voting. There's a documentary done by a British news agency that goes into depth about this effort. And I will post a link in the description box so that you can check that out. And frankly, you know, I think that people like Tariq Nasheed, whether knowingly or unknowingly, are acting as operatives for the Trump administration to make it easier for him to get reelected. You know, the bottom line is this, you know, some of these people like a Tariq Nasheed are professional race hustlers and they need to have somebody in the office like Donald Trump so they can perpetuate their grievance industry. So, again, I will post a link to that particular documentary that documents how the Trump administration deliberately tried to deter black people from voting. And it's unfortunate that in this day and age, you no longer need white supremacists to write laws. You no longer need white supremacists to intimidate black people at the polls. When you have these fake pro-black people on here using their platform to promote voter suppression, to suppress the black vote. And that's what you have here with this guy, Tariq Nasheed. So let's go into this. You know, I'm going to go into some of the things that he talked about. You know, the first thing he said is that the first reason why black people should not support Joe Biden is because of the crime bill. And he actually went on to say that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have policies that are harming black people. And he went on to say that Donald Trump has not put together any policy that's specifically harming black people. So, like this, you know, hindsight is 2020. The context in which that was passed, you had a rise in, you know, violence in black communities. You had the crack epidemic that was plaguing our communities, uh, communities like De uh, Detroit, D.C., Baltimore. They were plagued by violence. And even today, they are still plagued by violence. But it was far more violence back then during the crack epidemic than we experience it now and people were looking for solutions. That's why you had uh, the majority of the black congressional caucus support the crime bill. So it's easy to look back on something and say, oh, that was horrible. That makes him a horrible politician and all that kind of stuff. So that's the first thing that I'll say. The next thing that I'll say is, you know, by making a blanket statement about how Joe Biden has all these policies that are against black people, it's like that completely ignores the good things that Joe Biden has done. You know, this this folk, this singular focus on the crime bill ignores all the things that he's done, all the things that he's done under the Obama administration uh, that has benefited black people. And I've done many videos outlining the things that Obama has done to benefit black people. And I won't rehash those now. What I will do is post a link in the cards to a prior video where I explained why I supported Obama. So you have his record with the Obama administration. You also have his record of supporting affirmative action and supporting voting rights. And then you have to look at his current policies. Uh, with respect to the black community. He has a whole agenda outlining his policies. And later on in this particular video, I'm going to go into his agenda. I'm going to fully explain what his agenda is, like highlight some of the key points from his agenda. But it's like this singular focus on 
the crime bill from 1994 like ignores things that are going on now it ignores this current plan that he has that is of great benefit to the black community that addresses all these very important issues um, that matter to the black community another thing that I have to address is this he went on, he went on to say that Trump doesn't have any policies that are harming black people and that's just an outright lie. It shows that he's not aware of the Trump administration's track record. And it shows that he's really, frankly, not even qualified to speak on these issues. First of all, the Trump administration has used the Justice Department to attack affirmative action, to go after affirmative action, to undermine affirmative action. Also, when you look at police reform, his Justice Department reversed a lot of the policies of the Obama administration when it came to things like investigating police departments. You know, the Trump administration is cutting back on invest, you know, these uh, pattern and practice investigations of police departments. The Trump administration ended a program that allowed the department the Justice Department's Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services to assess police departments. And, you know, when you look at uh, this issue of mass incarceration, you know, an issue that people like Tariq Nasheed profess to be so concerned about, it's the Trump administration that reversed Obama administration uh, procedures in the Justice Department to try to reduce uh, mass incarceration. So he has directed federal prosecutors to pursue the most severe penalties possible for any crime, including nonviolent drug offenses. That's what you have in this Trump administration. You know, these people like a Tariq Nasheed, they want to go back to 1994 to talk about something that Joe Biden did. They want to go back to the 70s to talk about what Joe Biden did. But they're not talking about what's happening today on um, on um, uh, Trump's watch right now. They're not talking about that. They're not talking about the Trump administration cutting food assistance for needy black families. They're not talking about Trump cutting housing assistance for needy black families. They're not talking about any of this stuff. And you know, these people like a Tariq Nasheed profess to be so concerned about white supremacy. You know, that's the talking point that they constantly use. You know, white supremacy this, white supremacy that. But these same people don't even realize that the Trump administration cut resources that were used to investigate these white supremacist groups. You know, the budget was substantially reduced, and I'm going to provide all the sources for all this information in the description box so that you all can read it yourself. Not only did he, you know, the Trump administration cut those that funding for these white supremacist groups, he decided to even cut back on the investigation of these groups and to focus solely on foreign-based groups. At a time when you have all these government agencies saying that white supremacists are the greatest threat to uh, national security, the greatest terrorist threat to national security in this country. So that deals with his first point. You know, the second point that he made was Kamala Harris. Uh, he basically said that the second reason why people shouldn't vote for Biden and Harris is because of Kamala Harris's record of um, locking up black men and women. And, you know, he went on to make some other points um, about Obama, which I'm not going to go into right now. Um, and he made some points about judges, which I'll go into in a second before, I, you know, after I go into this point about Kamala Harris's record. Um, so he wants to focus on like her locking up all these black men and women and, you know, the issues dealing with her record. You know, that she does have a mixed record when it comes to being a quote unquote progressive prosecutor. She has a mixed record, but there are plenty of great things that she did. And these are the things that this guy, Tariq Nasheed, completely ignored and glossed over. 
and doesn't even want to acknowledge. And it's not even just about her track record. It's about the things that she's doing now as well that are a benefit to the black community. You know, Tariq Nasheed didn't tell you that she implemented training programs to address police officers' biases. He didn't tell you about her refusing to seek the death penalty for a man who was convicted of killing a police officer. And we know that the death penalty is um, a racist penalty because more likely than not, you know, black people are more likely to be uh, sentenced to death than white people. It is a, uh, a punishment that has been used in a racist fashion to disproportionately target and punish black people. The other thing that he, you know, Tariq Nasheed failed to mention was Kamala Harris's back on track program, where which allowed first time drug offenders to get a high school diploma and job training and jobs instead of drill, jail time. You know, he failed to mention that when he was talking about all these horrible things that uh, Kamala Harris has done with locking up black people. I mean, before I even go any further, I mean, if you're a prosecutor, your job is to prosecute and punish criminals. And just because somebody is black, that doesn't mean that they don't deserve to go to jail. Uh, another thing is this, you know, Kamala Harris uh, instructed her department to use the stream strikes law in a way that would not uh, it result in the unnecessary incarceration of black people. So she, what she did is she limited the third strike to only crimes that are very serious or violent type of crimes. So that that way someone's not incarcerated for life for um, a relatively minor offense. Now those are significant reforms that the sister implemented that greatly benefited black people. You know, the other thing is this, you know, the sister um, supports, you know, the George Floyd Act, you know, this uh, Justice and Policing Act. She's one of the senators that's been pushing for this. You know, this major reform that will address, you know, these policing issues, the issue of police brutality and racial profiling, so it's like, it's just amazing to me that you have somebody that's um, putting out all this information without giving the full picture, without like providing detailed information, you know, painting a narrative that's essentially designed to have you sit at home and allow these people to reelect that buffoon, Donald Trump, to another four years in the White House. Uh, so that's one thing that I, I had to mention. And then he talked about how, you know, he raised this issue of judges. Uh, he talked about how people were complaining, like, if Trump wins another election, he's going to appoint more judges. And, you know, that he hasn't appointed black judges. And he basically discounted that particular point by talking about how you have some Democratic appointed judges that aren't doing anything for black people. And he cited just, you know, one example that he cited was that judge that, um, you know, one of these judges that he labeled as a, a mammy and some other single judge that's on the, not even on the uh, federal bench. These judges that he cited are local judges that aren't even appointed by the president. You know, a couple of judges that made a couple of bad decisions in a couple of individual cases. I mean, it just ignores the reality of the situation. You know, it ignores the fact that you have a Trump administration that's appointing all these white judges, no black judge, you know, very few black judges, if any. And even more important than the racial dynamics of these appointments are the positions that these people take their positions on affirmative action, their positions on voting rights, their positions on criminal justice matters. These appointments are going to be detrimental to our civil rights, to our voting rights, to our right to affirmative action, to all kinds of rights, educational rights, voting rights. All these are very important rights are impacted by these appointments, not only on the the Supreme Court, but you have all these lower federal courts, you have the district courts, you have the courts of appeals, and these courts are deciding all kinds of very important decisions that impact our civil rights. 
But, you know, you got this guy citing a, an example of what he calls a mammy judge, and he's trying to use that to basically say that the Democrats aren't appointing judges that, um, you know, that are good for us either. And that's just a complete lie. You look at the track record on the Supreme Court in terms of the, the uh, judges appointed by Democrats and their positions on issues that matter to us, like voting rights, affirmative action, uh, criminal justice reform, you know, other types of uh, civil rights matters, you will see that their records far outweigh these Republican appointed judges. Um, so this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy is spewing nonsense. And it's just unfortunate that so many people follow him. And the third point that he made was this. He said that um, the Biden uh, campaign and, you know, Biden has prioritized immigrant policies over black policies. And I don't think that there's any evidence that that's the case. Um, you know, so he went on to say this. He went on to say instead of giving uh, black people protection from police brutality, he's going to prioritize non-citizens. And, you know, that's he went on to, to say that. And I just think that that's just false. You know, you can have um, multiple priorities. You can address immigrant issues and address issues important to black people. It's not an either or situation. And frankly, I just think that we need to get rid of all this xenophobia and hatred towards immigrants. And all that is is a, you know, that perpetuates a lot of this Trump rhetoric and these tr Trump talking points and policy positions. You know, a lot of times it seems like a lot of these fake pro-black people are more aligned with the man that they claim is a white supremacist than they are aligned with the very interests of black people. So, you know, he talked about they prioritize immigrant policies. There's no statement, that, no quote that he has where, he, where uh, Biden is literally saying that immigrant issues are more important than black issues, or he doesn't have any quote from Kamala Harris saying that. Instead, what he's basically doing is pitting two groups of people against each other, black people, black Americans against immigrants. And all that is the divide and conquer strategy that leads to a situation where black people remain in a powerless position and people of quote unquote color remain in a divided and conquered position. That's what he's perpetuating. You know, it's being perpetuated to the point and to the degree where you have black people fighting black people. You have some black people questioning other black people's blackness because they have a parent uh, from a, um, you know, from abroad, from a, a, a foreign country or something like that. Got black people fighting with each other where we need to be uniting with one another. So, you know, to, to say that, you know, that uh, the Obama, you know, not Obama, the Biden administration or Biden campaign is not prioritizing black issues. It's just, it's just contrary to the fact. All you have to do is look at Joe Biden's website where he lays out highlights from his agenda for the black community. You know, one of the things that he specifically talked about was how uh, instead of addressing police uh, issues and stuff like that, uh, Biden is focused on uh, immigrant issues. But as is pointed out in Joe Biden's agenda for the black community, he talks about expanding and using the power of the Justice Department to address systemic misconduct in police departments and prosecutors' offices. And as we know, the Trump administration's made it clear, like as I mentioned earlier, that they're not using the Justice Department to conduct these types of investigations of the police. Uh, they don't even believe that systemic racism is a reality. So that's one thing. You got the Justice um, and Policing Act that the um, that Kamala Harris was a co-sponsor of and supporter of and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so you have those examples of them prioritizing black issues. And if you look at this agenda of the Biden campaign, you'll see 
did they have a, a plan for creating wealth in the black community, investing in communities through housing? You know, they talk about health care insurance, you know, health care and insurance and all that kind of stuff. You know, that's a big part of that plan. And we have to understand that it's the Trump administration that wants to get rid of health care, you know, uh, with, you know, get rid of, a quote unquote, Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, a program that has insured millions of black people. Millions of black people are dis disproportionately uninsured. But this program. You know, this program of the, the Biden uh, campaign is designed to uh, have a public option and to expand upon the Affordable Care Act. You know, he has a plan to increase funding for um, Title I schools and all that kind of stuff. With You know, schools with high percentages of low-income students, schools with high percentages of black students. Uh, his plan calls for, uh, you know, support for education beyond high school, providing two years of community college and quality training uh, without debt for hard working individuals. It calls for uh, investment, you know, $50 million investment in uh, workforce training and also support to HBCUs. Then this goes into detail about his plan to strengthen America's commitment to ju for justice. Um, it goes on to talk about a grant to spur states to focus on prevention and reducing incarcerated populations. And as I mentioned before, uh, he wants to um, expand and use the power of the Justice Department to address systemic misconduct in police departments and prosecutors' offices. And it goes on to say that he wants to eliminate the death penalty and mandatory minimums and end the federal crack and powder cocaine disparity and decriminalize the use of cannabis. Also, it talks about um, investing $1 billion per year in the juvenile justice reform. All of those are programs designed to benefit black communities. But yet, you know, you'll hear from this guy, you know, that he wants to continue the, these policies of benign neglect. And that was his other point, you know, that another reason why he said we shouldn't support the Democrats or support Biden. Uh, because they're going to continue systems of benign neglect. And as I pointed out, you know, that program, you know, that agenda addresses this so-called, quote-unquote, benign neglect. You know, it's up to us to make sure that we're not neglected. You know, it's up to us to push our agenda. It's not for us to just sit back and wait for these politicians to do right by us. We have to aggressively push an agenda. And he's talking about benign neglect, like the Trump administration has no intent to address any of your issues. You know, some people have been bamboozled and hoodwinked, in the words of Malcolm X, by this fake uh, platinum plan that the Trump administration has put out. All that is is a last minute, last ditch effort to uh, shave off a few ignorant, gullible Negro votes to allow him to to win uh, re-election. If he was serious about any of that stuff, he could have implemented a lot of that stuff during his time in the White House. During the past four years, he could have implemented that stuff, but he's not serious about that. That's only to shave off a few ignorant votes to make the difference in this election. And unfortunately, a lot of black people are going for the okie doke. They're going for the nonsense. They're buying into the bullshit. Uh, so, yeah, you know, so that was the fourth point that was already addressed in the highlights that I provided from um, Joe Biden's agenda for the black community. 
the last thing that he mentioned is that Joe Biden said that instead of helping uh, black people, he's going to focus on LGBT issues. And, you know, I don't see any quote like this guy, Tariq Nasheed, just mentioned that he did not provide any kind of quote from Joe Biden saying that he's going to make that his only issue or he's going to uh, put that over the issues of black people. Uh, so I just think that that's a complete distortion for a candidate to say that they're going to prioritize, um, you know, LGBT issues or address LGBT issues. That doesn't mean that they're going to neglect our issues necessarily. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It's like, again, this is more that rhetoric of pitting communities against each other, having black people fighting against the LGBT uh, community and their issues and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there is no, he hasn't put forth any kind of evidence that Joe Biden is going to put those issues over black people. And again, it's up to us to push our issues, to make sure that our issues are at the forefront. We know that Donald Trump is not going to prioritize our issues at all. You know, he, his administration doesn't even think there is a thing such as systemic racism in this country. His administration doesn't even view police brutality as a problem. His administration uh, sympathizes and panders to white supremacists. You know, telling those those Proud Boys, that racist group Proud Boys, to stand back and to stand by. You know, talking, you know, when confronted about uh, David Duke and the Klan supporting him, this man pretended like he didn't know who David Duke was. He, he didn't even address the question of renouncing the KKK, you know, a racist organization, a terrorist organization, and all that kind of stuff. This is a man who's appointing judges that are going to undermine our civil rights. But yet and still, you got this guy, Tariq Nasheed, on here so concerned about what uh, Biden did 100 years ago, and he's not concerned about what uh, Donald Trump is doing right now. And that just exposes these people. You know, people like this race hustling, uh, to read Nasheed for what they are, man. They are here to deter black people from voting and to help Donald Trump win re-election. So those are my thoughts. Please rate, comment, subscribe, like the video, share the video, hit that notification bell so that you'll know when I post new content on here. Peace and blessings. And again, all my sources will be in the description box so that you can read them and watch them for yourself. Peace.